This episode is a demonstration of how to decode the Master Lock 1523D. Hey folks, welcome to Pugs Picks Locks. If you're new here, feel free to click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you'll always be notified when I release new content like this. And if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, click that like button, and leave a comment or question down below. Did I get something wrong? Is it something I could do better, do differently? Please let me know. I want to learn from all of you to continue to grow my knowledge and skill set and provide you with better and better content. Also, Leave a comment if there's a specific topic that you would like covered. Okay, let's start with a shout out of the week. This week, the shout out goes to Zachary Willard, AKA Goose732. As I film this, Zachary has 397 subscribers. It would be so cool to get him over that 400 mark. If you have any interest in challenge locks, his channel is a great one to check out as it features a load of challenge locked picking guts. So let's all hop over and give this veteran a sub. Let's dive into this week's video. This master lock uh, 1523D is a low security application uh, padlock. It's a combination lock and master lock gives it a security rating of four out of 10. But we all know that the master lock security ratings are more about the physical toughness of the lock than they are about the lock's resistance to being opened non-destructively without the key or combination. So um, the way you decode these is um, by pulling outward on the shackle and then turning the code wheels until you feel a gate. And um, I've opened, I don't know, a dozen or more of these, and I've never detected a false gate in any of them. So I can't say, because I have, I've never gutted one of these, I can't say with full confidence that um, they don't have false gates, but I can say that I personally have never detected a false gate. Okay, the way, um, the way this works is that there is a rod that runs through the center of the code wheels. And that rod has a rounded end. Maybe you can see down in the shackle hole there and you can see the rounded end of the rod. And that rounded end interfaces with this cutout, this notch cut into the shackle. Um, it has a spring on the other side that kind of forces the rod into the locked position. And then if the numbers are all, if the comp proper combination is set and all of the gates are aligned with the lugs or the teeth that on the shaft that you can see in the diagram, if the gates and the lugs line up, then when you pull the shackle, it pushes that rod um, out of the way, allowing the shackle to open, and then the spring just pushes it back into the locked position so that when you close the shackle, it does the same thing in reverse. It pushes the rod out of the way and then lets the rod snap back. And then when you are not in the correct combination, when you try to pull on that shackle, the lugs hit the solid portions of the dials and the shaft, the rod cannot slide into the unlock position. Okay, these are recodable. And the way you recode them is by pulling off the end cap here. And then the number uh, wheels just slide right off and then you can turn them and reassemble it with whatever number you want um, facing up. Um, or in line with the master logo here. So um, that's how you recode these. These are very easily recodable. Um, I'm gonna take the number wheels off and you can see that um, 
that the actual locking mechanism part of the dial is um, has these nubs that interact with the teeth on um, on the number wheels, the gears on the number wheels. It interacts with them and turns them. And you can see that when it's in the unlocked position, the red paint is in line with the master. Although this last one doesn't really have red paint on it, you see a little splash of red paint on the flat part of the dial, not on the nub. Um, so whoever painted this did a sloppy job. But um, that doesn't matter because the, um, the ones that indicate the unlocked position all have a groove in the top of the nub. And the other nubs that interact with the number wheel, um, do, they do not have that groove they're flat on the top okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead i'm going to grab a cloth and we're going to put a cloth over this whole mess and we're going to try to put um we're going to try to put uh the wheels on the number wheels on um, as randomly as i can and uh, to recode it so that I can show you then how to um, properly decode it. Okay. Um, there's the last wheel, number wheel, almost lost it. And there we go. There's the end cap. Let's slide the end cap on, lock that into place. Let's close the shackle. Um, and give the dials a good scramble. Okay, so now we have a random combination set and I'm gonna set this to all zeros to start with. And this should not uh, be our combination. It is not. I'm gonna grab a carabiner and um, the point of the carabiner is so that I can um, pull out on the shackle. Um, turn it this way. Yeah. So that I can pull out on the shackle and exert a lot of pressure um, on the shackle. The main point is to put as much of the pressure here where the rounded end of the rod is so that I'm trying to force it against the spring. I'm basically forcing the rod up against the code wheels so that the lugs press up against the code wheels. So as much pressure as I can on this side. And then I'm gonna turn the wheels and I'm not getting a lot of feedback from this first wheel. So I didn't get any feedback hardly at all. And then I'm gonna turn the next one and that actually might be one. But I'm gonna keep going to feel. No, that is, I'm pretty sure that's one. It's locking up when I try to go to two. Now, if I force it, I can force it. Um, just gonna keep going just to be sure. Yeah, so it's kind of locking up a little bit and it's pretty floppy. That's kind of what this floppiness is the biggest indicator that you're in a gate. That's primarily what I'm feeling for. But the fact that it's locking up and doesn't easily want to move to two is another indicator. Okay, so let's go to the next code wheel. Nope. That might be zero. There's that floppiness I was talking about. And it's not resisting going to one as much, but it does have that floppiness. So I'm gonna leave that at zero just in case. Um, we might have to come back to that, uh, that dial. Um, this dial, no. Okay, didn't wanna go to four. Oh, I felt the shackle move when I hit seven. And there's that floppiness, and there's floppiness here, floppiness here. 
I think all three of these are in a gate. So I'm gonna go back to the first one, which I previously got zero feedback on. And I'm going, and there it is one. So our combination, sell toy swivel, our combination is seven zero one one. Um, so that's that. This is how a uh, Master Lock 1523D works and how to decode it. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, remember to drop a like and leave a comment or a question below. If you're new here, subscribe and ring the notification bell for more content like this. Until the next video, happy picking y'all.